Welcome back, everyone, to the Insomnia True Server Championship. Now, that was quite a uh, video. Power glow! Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know oh, what happened. Power overwhelming! Oh, my goodness. It was 16 bits, man. <laughs> hey, wait, it was 8 bit, actually. 8 bit video. Yeah, yeah. 8, 8 bit, sorry. This, old school. That's one question, school. though. If go you ahead. have a power glove and you want to devour all the games, why do you, clo like, why do you go to the underground instead of being in the middle of the city devouring all the games? Because that's just how it works, Nimsh. I don't like your closed-mindedness. <laughs> Thank you. That being said, uh, we're onwards to the fourth match of the day. We've got the uh, the next one, opposing players that we don't really know too much about. It's Slitha, which we saw qualify through the international online qualifier. Mm -hmm. And his opponent, Riri, is a local. You know, uh, we were mentioned that the Riri and Ness are both locals. Yeah. So, so we don't know much about them. Right. Th this is their chance to present themselves to the community and to us as casters. Uh, I know a bit about Slitha or Slitha. I, I was talking to him and I could wonder if they feel like they're the only players from Spain. I don't know what Pini Awesome has to say about that. But I mean, Pini from Portugal? No, wait, he's from Spain, yeah, he's right? Spain, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, that's an insult I just said. What have you done? Yeah, what I have done. So somebody's uh, mad out there. Pini is attacking here. Yeah, for sure, man. But they're both playing Paladins, they're both playing Druids, and uh, the difference is in the third class, which is the Warrior and the Warlock. I mean, I, I don't know what type of Warlock that's being played, because that's what basically makes the big difference in the way things are going to work out. Yep. Uh, there's about, you know, 17,000 lists right now that people yeah. are running, so it's really hard to make a call. And, and most of them are running Dark Peddler. Right, they're all running that, right? All right, but the first game is we are going to see is Paladin versus Paladin. Paladin versus Paladin, they're both playing secrets, at least there's Avenge. So we can make an assumption that there's a mysterious challenger. In both decks. Hmm. But that's a pretty rough curve for Riri. If it starts with Repentance, it's going to be a little bit rough. Especially the, the fact that uh, the Repentance is not usable on turn one. Uh, you, you could try if you had Muster, I guess, but... Right, so Paladin versus Paladin is an interesting matchup because it's not that much about who is going to uh, win on board, but it's like who is going to, to be first. Like the one without the coin, the player who's playing first and he's playing on curve is eventually going to win. But it seems like Riri didn't have anything on the one. Yeah, but it's fine, I think, because he, did, he, get, he got the Noble Sacrifice off the top, which let him protect himself. Uh, and now, if Slitha wants to protect his Secret Keeper, his only option is to go for Coin Muster, attack with a weapon. Uh, but that means the Minibot stays alive and can then wreak havoc on the board, or to play Repentance to increase its health. Mm. Is there ever an argument to uh, just hero, just hero powering? Like, is that ever a thing you would do? No, I think it's either to play Master Battle or play Repentance into hero power, or, or just Knife Juggler, just to you know play mind games. Because if you play Knife Juggler into this situation, uh, it's a wave. Is it? Yeah, so um, it, might be, it might be important to keep the coin for Mr. Challenger, but on the other hand, if you're able to take the board this early, it actually gives you an advantage. All right, so there is a shield and mini bot from, from Riri. Repentance probably doesn't do much at this point. So, the Repentance wasn't played, he, have gone, he has gone for the Massive Battle. Yeah, she didn't mean about makes those. It's kind of funny how they're both stuck with the Repentance early game, and they probably think, <laughs> I'm the only one stuck with Repentance early game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it often happens, like, sometimes players just have bad hands, like both yeah. of them. Those are the interesting games. The usually. druids yeah. that both draw horribly <laughs> yeah, happens. and actually trade. Oh man, three mana doesn't seem good. Probably Jugger and nothing else. I mean, well, right. the repentance will be played. I'm sure of that. If Just he spots the, the repentance here, he's gonna be. Oh, it's not redemption. So I'm good. I can make trades now, which is something he wasn't gonna do, and he was trying to set up a consecration by popping their shield. Mm -hmm. But now he might reevaluate. Well, on turn four, what do you expect? You expect maybe Keeper, you expect uh, Shredder. So, does it matter that much if you actually hit this with Repentance? And now the question is if there's a Consecration on your board, 
Is it a problem? Oh, oh my. Oh, 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 look at that. I mean, it's not that much of an issue, right? Because you are playing your own consecration afterwards. It's taking up his entire But that turn. wasn't the, well, that wasn't he the plan. The he, right. played the, uh, he played the Repentance just to have a better consecration his own, on his right. own, right? So maybe it was actually a merit to trade with one of the mini bots to, for your opponent to play into your, his, your consecration. But it's, it's very... It's, it's a, a tough, tough decision. I think this two tower champion is an amazing draw here because if he don't, if he goes for consecration here, then he's letting himself, you know, he's free of blessing of kings. He's not going to necessarily run into that problem. And then on five, whatever the other paladin plays, two server should be able to handle it at least uh, enough. The problem is you don't have the, the turn five play. Like even if you go to server, if, if you would it not play, it is sort of a turn five, but yeah. Not yeah, really. yeah. yeah. Well, at least the Repentance will allow um, Slefa to kill it with the Trump, uh, Light Justice. So... <laughs> now you don't play the Shoes or do you still? Well, like, you still you can play it, but okay, you just don't waste one of the durability points, and that's it. Yeah, you're right. I might play True Silver, but I don't... just for the health gain, but you're gonna get that, and I don't think that the game will be ending nearly, you know, before you've expended those two charges anyway. Oh, oh. that's not Curator. That's difficult. <laughs> Alright, he does go for the... Hero power here. Wants to have a trigger, perhaps, for the Monsieur's Challenger or alongside it. I don't like that at all. But I don't like that at all because um, you will not play the Truth of a Champion most likely on turn 7 anyway, because you need minions on board. And gaining the tempo right now with the Truth of a Champion would have been very important. Right? Yeah, Truth of would be amazing just to deal with the juggler this turn. Yeah, I'm just surprised he opted not to. Now, guaranteed uh, to get all the secrets left in his deck. But that doesn't mean he's necessarily in a winning position, depending on what Riri finds here. He's very low when it comes right. to health points, and that's something really scary, even if you're facing a Paladin. And he's not even threatening the, the health of, the, of his opponent. So even though this Mr. Challenger will have plus four attack, three from Avenge, and plus one from Competitive Spirit, it doesn't matter that much, because you, you still have to trade into those three attack minions. Yep. And he has no way of uh, making it a, it a taunted minion, so has to be used as a trade material, which is awful for him. And he probably die into turns anyway. I, I don't think there's a turn. I was going to say, I don't think there's a way for Slitha to live unless he's playing a weird list. Uh, with Belcher, of Argus. Right, I was going to say, with Defend of Argus is the type of weird list that usually will get you out of the situation. Because you play Defender with a Juggler and then you have a pretty, you know, buffed up board. But as it stands... Um, there, boys. Like a Hail Mary on the Shredder looks like the only out. Another! <laughs> what? What are the odds? The Barbers! How many two drops are now? He's shaving that Paladin pretty clean! Absolutely, right? <laughs> and that's gonna be game right there. Slitha will go down. It is the most important game of the match. We were talking about that earlier when we cast last match. Paladins are usually the go-to opener for all players who bring the class, and whoever wins with it uh, not only gets the first win, but they have a deck that's good against the entire field. Yeah. And because of that, they're able to sometimes just, you know, get two wins right off the bat, sometimes even three. Especially because Paladin can get, not, not only is good versus the entire field, it also has sometimes unconditional wins when you right. curve out perfectly and your opponent can't do anything. So we're going to see Paladin from Miri again because it survived and uh, Slitha has to change deck. He goes with Armorsmith. Looks like a patron. The Battle Rage here, usually a pretty big giveaway. <laughs> yeah, usually a really big giveaway when it comes to the patron deck because that's the only warrior deck that currently runs this card. But I don't know, my impression of current performances when it comes to patron is like, eh, I would rather play something else. I agree with you. I, right? I like it. I but mean, it, I feel like it doesn't like what people report as result is not at all what I see. Yeah, that's probably because people didn't play at least Star Seeker, but now everything changed. You're right. Kr yeah, Kranich is redefining. <laughs> yeah, Kranich was saying it in the patron. It was so important. Yeah, I'm sure when we will see Kranich, if we will see Kranich again with his patron of Star Seeker, he will use the Star Seeker, and the uh, the Star Seeker will be a, a second last card in the in the deck. And even if you will get it. It will not matter. It's the new Grom. Are you doubting Kranich? <laughs> Do you think Kranich is going to die off stage, like silently? I don't know, man. I don't know. This is a pretty good opening for both players, I'd say. Yeah, I feel like the turn three from Riri might be where things start to get a little weird if uh, there's a War Axe, and there is one. And there's also the Dread Corsair, which slows down 
Rivia's ability to keep pushing. So Slitza here with a really good turn three is likely to be in control of the game for a little while longer. Yeah. Wow, the bear trap without the activation. For one mana. That's actually a good way to put it. I like that. Oh, it's awful, but <laughs> it's... Um, you know, it's for beast, Grizzly is the best. Yeah, well, that's not a beast, that's a pirate, right? Which is and the, there's more synergy with the beasts than with the pirates. What can he get for the turn three? Uh, Lothab is not, <laughs> so you just do that. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. If Slitha is actually able to stop the turn three from Riri, after that point, he's able to start uh, whittling down. One thing that I didn't like going. Go is ahead. the fact that Riri did the hero power so quick. I wanted him to, to like, bluff. Yeah, yeah. To may uh, maybe I'll have something else, but I don't want to play it. Maybe I have massive for battle, but it's not worth it here. Yeah, yes. there's no reason exactly. to play it into one. But when he played it so fast, the opponent knows. Okay, now he has only four, five, six, seven, seven eight, eight drops, <laughs> 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 and I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Mine Might was a, a good problem. life, but there's no more. <laughs> this uh. is such a great situation for Sifa. Unstable bull here on empty board. It can get killed with true server, but if it doesn't, if there's a minion and you hope there is something like Path of the Shredder. So I, I really hope that Rudy really will not pick up a Path of the Shredder right now. Because then he would go for the Path of the Shredder yeah. when he needs to kill that ghoul instantly right now. Right. Yeah, and you can't let that be uh, before turn five. If turn five hits, it's his death bite all over again. Double patron. But you still go with the loss up here. I or like Patron in a Rage. You like Patron in a Rage? I think, well, I mean, I guess you, you need maybe to wait for another Whirlwind effect. Lothab is safe, you're right. Like, Patron in a Rage is too dangerous. If there is Consecration, you just lose Whirlwind. Or, like, even if there is a minion. Wow. Yeah. Can't play Repentance now even for the Lothab. Patron. Look at that. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. The Repentance is not, is not allowed to counter the Patron. You can't. There's not enough mana. Well, it's not like there is a Whirlwind, so it's still just Patron in a Rage. Yeah, but a patron of one HP in great deal. It's it's a bit better. Just face the patron without anything else. Hmm. That's a solitary patron. Face the pate. Nobody get in here. I'm just drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody get in here. I'm drowning my sorrows. My best friend got nerfed and now she's worse than a raid leader. <laughs> Such Rain Yeah. Pretty sad. But uh, do you still play it? Do you you can't, right? Like, this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is bad. There's no, there's no way out of this. I'm going to pass. I'm like, going to break the news to you, Nimsh. This turn is bad. There has to be something, Noxious. This is the problem of the decks that are just pulling it off as, as a combo, right? What you if, just have those turns. What if Slitha... Well, I mean, what if Patron only had one Patron the way all Rogue is cutting to one oil? One page okay, change. then so why would you play Unstable Ghouls and Whirlwinds and Right, well, that, that's what I'm saying. Well, he has yeah. an okay turn now because he can page with Inner Rage and Battle Rage. I love that. You know, you know what you can do? You can cut thing. one patron, then you can cut Inner Rages, Battle Rages, <laughs> Whirlwinds, <laughs> Make control and water. Unstable Ghouls and add mid-range mid creatures. Like right. Cochrane Elite, put Finley Murgleton to, to be able to ping. You go patron. face. No, you need to go face. You need to, pay, to take the Warrior Hero Power, play Heroic Strikes. <laughs> and play it like a real warrior. But yeah, I feel like Patron is in a weird spot because this turn exactly is kind of what we were talking about. We don't see the deck perform nearly as well as we hear it should. Uh, and even though it is considered a top tier deck by a lot of players, and we're talking about some of the best players, uh, it is really odd when you see it perform in tournament Well, settings. it might be metagame reliant, and Paladin actually knows how to play versus this specific Patron right now. So I've seen Paladin win more. There is Mystery Challenger. Yeah. So e easy you... turn. Yeah, how can well, you, you have not? To play Repent it's so ridiculous. Wait, why didn't he play the Repentance last turn? Oh, he played the Hero Power instead of Repentance. That, that was really weird. It's, I don't know. It's fine. He can play Repentance now. And, he and he, if he do it, does it like super fast, it will look like he, he played Mystery Challenger for seven months. Like Lothar right. did it once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh. scientist, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, when I was playing against Life Coach, actually, Life Coach was confused. Super confused. So basically, Lothar had Mad Scientist, no secrets in the deck, and he lost his Mad Scientist and he played Mirror Image, image from, yeah. from his and hand. And it looked like, like he got two? Or he, like, he no, passed no, no, him I, five I just more played minutes. it, like my IPM was over the top, right? <laughs> and uh, I just queued up the trade with the Mad Scientist and I instantly played the secret from my hand. 
So life coach, like what he saw was the fact that the med scientist got, got, yeah, got yeah, the yeah, secret, but then I lost three like, men, and he was like, "What the hell? Did he play it, or did he did he <laughs> get you know, it?" You know his <laughs> yeah, face, yeah. right? Yeah. He, Whoa! What happened here? Did I miss something? And yeah, then yeah, he yeah. Alt F4 reboots. <laughs> He's like, "No, there's no glitch." <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is production value. Look at those five beautiful secrets. It is. Those are really Christmas lights. If there ever was, one should be green, garden. one should be red, one should be purple. Happy Feast of Winter. No, no, you one said should like be that. orange. Happy orange, Feast of green Winter. Sheep, orange, green sheep, blackout, purple. purple. Now we're missing one. <laughs> we need blue, blue sheep. Blue right? player. Yeah. Did you say green sheep? Green sheep. Yeah. Okay. Green yeah. sheep is the green. We, we're looking for a blue player though. We had we have white. Or we had white. Because Powder's nickname was White Powder, but he had to That was a really bad nickname. That was a bad nickname. That is a very bad nickname. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who won? White Powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't go to school. I would cast that. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow, so. the Gold Hammer. But Turin is probably better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to misplay if you're rearing that spot. You'd have to try to not win to lose. Are you ever afraid of Brawl? No. Against Patreon nowadays, it's unfortunate, but there was a little, a very small window people where played they played it, and I think it had to do, uh, it was actually during the... Uh, the end of the Warzone Commander. Exactly, the end of the Warzone Commander when Secret Paladin was starting to, to make its way, yeah. and uh, Brawl started coming up. You basically played Brawl to counter Patreon. Oh, wow. You that don't... actually was a huge mistake. Well, a huge one. It's a mistake. Oh, it's a huge mistake because he lost a minion. He lost the Murloc. That oh. was a 4-3 because of that trade. He trade. He did trade first with He didn't the... need to, to lose the 4-3 at all. Yes, he at all. He threw it away yeah. into the frog. Exactly. Well, Bacon Hunter, thing. Bacon Hunter is interesting. But then there is redemption, right? I mean, you can draw with the Acolyte. If there's Noble Sack, you're going to draw two cards from it over yeah. time. Right. If you pick up a Whirlwind here and you get, let's say, an Execute, uh, if there is like a bench hitting Turian, you can deal with Turian. That doesn't matter. And I just want to go back to the turn when which uh, Ray was playing. I really don't understand his um, train of thought to leave the Acolyte on board when he clearly had the Noble Sacrifice with the Avenge and Redemption, right? So wasn't it just better to clear out the board and sacrifice the damage? Maybe he forgot he has Noble Sacrifice. I think he forgot, but in this case, it's actually really punishing because the Inner Rage can take out one of the boring... Uh, like the, the the redemption sorry was triggered on the uh, the two one. Yeah. And with by using the uh, BGH, you can guarantee a, a clear over two turns. Okay, this is something I don't uh, understand either because I'm curious now why he did this. Why didn't why won't you kill the Tyrion? I know that it adds five damage to the board of the weapon, right? But it takes. But it 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 actually deals at least nine damage, and you lose the shield as well. Okay, I'm actually. Well, I said nine because it's eight, eight, eight eight and yeah, yeah. plus one for the divine shield, right? But when you have to sacrifice a full attack, I like think he does not want to give his opponent the weapon. That's the reasoning. The thing is, I'm trying to figure out how maybe, threatening that weapon really is. I mean, he's at 25 HP. It's not that horrible, right? Maybe he thought that Big Hunter only targets minions with seven attack, and Tyrion had nine. Hmm. Now you're being way too logical about this, then. Well, he is in a bad spot anyway, especially after Consecration. He would have been in an okay spot, because maybe you can execute that 7-7 seven, seven afterwards, right? But now the Tyrion is basically unanswerable. Yeah, what can you do with the Tyrion? You can just Inner Rage that into Wind into Execute. Well, I mean, Patron, Inner Rage, Battle Rage will eat up right now seven of your mana. You'll be drawing two cards. Uh, there's got to be some kind of God draw happening. It has to be a Whirlwind. We Second Bigger Hunter. Right. It's not a whirlwind, and neither is this, and that should be should the be end for Slitha in this game. Oh wow, what a fair play! He didn't concede. Look at that. It's actually okay. I like players who allow me to finish the game. Nymph likes it when he's able to get the lethal blow, right? So like in card games, in traditional card games, what you did was like showing your opponent the hand. It's like okay, I got you with the with those cards. Those were my decisions. So I like when the uh, opponent actually like shows all the stuff, so, like plays all the cards he had in the hand, and then finishes me off. To see what misplay did you like? What did you play around that you did not have to play around? Yeah, exactly. Based exactly. on what I've been doing. Instead of just just winning, right? And right. if I concede, I don't have that information. I would like to be able to say reveal hand that like tick an option that says reveal my hand at the end of a game. Yeah, exactly. Just for the sake of you know, sportsmanship. 
If you want to have a communication system between players that is not toxic, that's got to be one of the best ones. It's like I, I had pocket aces. Yeah, like I didn't top deck the Savage War. I had another one, let's yeah. say. So. <laughs> But then it would be like, well, he didn't have anything, and he dubbed it. Of yeah, course, of course. Exactly. That's exactly how it feels. And then you just slam. Happy Feast of Winter, Ismael. Yeah. And then all the trees come out. They should have Christmas hats as they punch you in the face. Little Santa's little helpers. We should have Christmas cards as well, like Thorison with the Christmas hat. I agree with that. Leper Gnome being the leper helper. Helper, Hel helper, helper Gnome? Of Satan Clans, right? Sidon Klaus. Who's going to be the reindeer? Like well, we had a reindeer in World of Warcraft DCG. Uh, we had Metzen. Uh, Metzen, yeah. It was like Chris Metzen, Metzen the reindeer. Yeah. It was actually pretty funny. They had a lot of cool cards in that DCG. We have a lot of, honestly, I feel like in the game that we have in Hearthstone, we have a lot of, like, a lot more whimsical cards, but we don't have any of the crazy, like, Leroy Jenkins. You know, you have to stand up and scream Leroy Jenkins to get the Otherwise, you can, yeah, right. you can attack. Yeah. There's so many cool cards in that game. Like Fell River, you had to actually stomp with, with your feet, right? To actually play it. Uh, like the, the there, was a, there was a huge wolf, and you had to howl to actually like, get the tokens. So like, randomly, it's beautiful. when there was like 400 people playing, you just heard randomly like people howling <laughs> in different parts of the room. Oh no! <laughs> oh, if, if they ever put in voice communication in Hearthstone, that's the first thing they have to add. But uh, they never will. Never. Yeah. Well, for, for now we have a happy feast of winter. So, you know, we didn't really talk about the game at all since it started, which just goes to show how uh, engrossed <laughs> we are in that old conversation about uh, the WoW TCG. But the start from Riri was really... Like, it seems like it's powerful because he's on curve, but overall it's kind of weak. Uh, yeah, yeah, the minions doesn't... are not that great. Right, exactly. There's no mini bots, no jugglers, no pressure. He's missing turn four as well, and that's a really good pickup actually. There is a silence, but for him, from his perspective, it's a four drop, and it's a card that he can cast right now to create pressure and board. And he just saw a keeper, so he doesn't <laughs> exactly. expect a second one for he's, sure. He's so happy and so devastated when he sees the second keeper. I mean, even if there will be a, uh, no keeper on board not now, you can't not play it. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is I was thinking about trading with the keeper of the grove, you know? To make sure that there's no possible you know, attack here, then set up a swipe over a few turns, let's say. You know, I just don't like giving my opponent oh. the option to, to have creature on board when I can still be in charge even if he will silence, right? Because that trade was really good. Yeah, it was it was a good trade to have. That now, however, smart. if uh, Slither opts awesome. for the Drake, that means Riri gets the full value from Divine Favor. Yeah, that Divine Favor is going to be brutal. Yes, it will. Goodness, this is insane. Do you even play the secret? Oh, yes, you do. You can get another seven secret. cards for free mana. A pretty good deal. A bit, a bit better than Battle Rage. A bit. He gets double avenge. Just and he start. can still play one secret. Well, Challenger suddenly looks pretty bad, though. What? What do you care? It's not that terrible. It is a seven drop. And avenge is still pretty good. Because you can play it on seven with another secret, so you're fleshing out whatever it gives you. Like you're filling up the Avenge that it doesn't give. But he will have seven mana, so you'll be able to, again, like do the sh Lothar shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I don't think he'll be fast enough. Forbidden APM techniques are forbidden for a reason, Nimsh. He can try. I mean, even if if um, the Mysterious Challenger will give him like two secrets, it's still worth it. Yeah. It's still 6-6 six, six that draws two cards. It looks like that swipe was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, actually, he actually knew it's not redemption somehow. He hoped it was not redemption. So he took the gamble and it worked out. But the, the game would look so different if only he would make the trade with the Keeper. He would still have the um, Haunted Creeper on board and kill the opponent. Kill the opponent, creeper. yeah, that's right. It would have made a bit of a difference in this exact spot. Now, Riri doesn't really have a thousand options, right? He has Noble Sack in hand that he can play with the uh, Challenger if he wants, or he's got the Avenge that he can play with that. I, I think you should go for the... Um, I, I, for the mass minions. I, I don't like... Yeah, I don't like a Challenger here. I think yeah, yeah, I don't like the Challenger. Isolating either. it makes it too vulnerable to uh, BGH. Actually, in this case. it doesn't make it that vulnerable to BGH, because... Is there a Noble Sacrifice being played at all? We, well... Are we actually Litha got, will we think actually, so. Okay, we actually got the Noble Sacrifice because... 
He got it from Challenger. Yes, basically. yes. And so, I, yeah. I was thinking that playing Knife Juggler, mini bot, mini bot, noble sacrifice just makes a more, more, uh, more durable persistent board. board. Yeah, persistent yeah. or durable. Yeah. Just, just uh, not so weak to re to mass removal and. Uh, I feel like Slitha is just trying to set up his combo kill next turn, right? You go Shade, Shredder. I think at this point, based on what he's doing now, he's trying to set something up. Because he's hovering over the Shade. Shade and Shredder makes a lot of sense. Like, next turn he'll have um, Savager and Force Nature. He, he has the, that Innervate. Yeah. Dr. Boom's good as well, but Repentance. Well, he's not sure if there's Repentance, right? That's the best. Well, now he knows. It's really possible. Because it can't be Noble Sack. Yeah, so there was no noble sacrifice. Oh, there's none. He played the first one early in the game. That's one. It's pretty Gen good, one, right? Because there's no way this going to get, get a BGH. Like there's no way to get a. Oh, well, now back. he's giving him a consecration. He's giving him a consecration in order to give him Boombot to the face damage, in order to give him the combo to the face to win. That's a pretty nice gift. There's no consecration though. Well, yeah. he would have given him one. Well, there's still knife juggler. Knife juggler in a couple of minions. Yeah, it's not terrible. He dies at the first knife. <laughs> <laughs> the bomb I'm calling it <laughs> dibs on knife juggler's life. I would say second knife. Second knife? Yeah, second knife is going to, to kill the bomb and juggler. Not far, which knife? First, first second. One, first one. First one. Oh, almost. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're right, Nim. Ah, the second knife. Oh, second. Well played, well played. There is one more knife, guys. Yeah, but nobody wins. <laughs> You but know. why wouldn't go for the Noble Sacrifice then? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, he's dead anyway, but uh... Why not Noble Sacrifice? Is he dead for sure? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> like, yeah. Over yeah, yeah, 100. Dead, so right. And Slitha does set up the lethal over two turns that he, that he gets in the end. I mean, Shade and the Shredder kind of worked out uh, as one of the plays, but you could play the Doctor Boom. If you think you don't need the Shade necessarily to live, it's still weak to Consec. So maybe there's a good argument to do that. Either way, having minions on the board is what he needed. Making sure that something was there to give him a tiny bit more reach with the uh, the combo play. And look what made the difference. The one additional keeper. Early in the game. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the, the mistake that changed the pace of the game and didn't allow really to uh, just have always the board control. And well, I well, think well. that's... It, it, there's a lot of uh, tiny turns that like change the dynamic of the game, and I think usually it's hard to kind of spot them. A few times, though, you can really see where it happens, and I think that trade was one of those stages where you end up with a minion on the board that has too much health for yeah. you to remove effectively. On the other hand, there but was the difficult. innervate, so you hope there is no combo on turn eight. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't predict the innervate combo. Uh, even though the hand is big, sometimes they don't necessarily hold everything. And we see a zoo, yeah. I think, from Riri, which gives him a really big edge. A really I think, great matchup for Riri, zoo versus Druid. Yeah, and the start from Slitha does not involve any ramp. No wider growth, no innervate. He will get bad. an innervate, man. He will get an innervate with the next draw. Just count on that. <laughs> you want to see the world burn, Lothar. But it's still not that great, because there's no, no minion just to kill it with the killer of the grove, right? Uh, Rap shift. Oh. They do it's just. You probably don't wrap it. Just shape. Why not? Because if if he gets something bigger next turn, you want to wrap that one. If like you would have a flame imp in hand, that would be have been played. So that's there's no flame imp, and you're not doing anything on turn three either. So what do you? You wrap shift again. You wrap on three. Well, now you can make a wrap because there's no difference. It would have made it on turn two or on turn three. I guess I guess the only difference is if you wanted to innervate on three, assuming you top deck something, then you really had to wrath on two to get rid of that minion. But it's like it's a minor difference in the way it, it pans out. Uh, this is interesting because he's setting both Voidwalkers at two. So the keeper can clear it up, but, but the problem is the that defender is going to be yeah. The Defender of Argus makes here a huge difference. Especially if uh, he damaged uh, the Void Walkers. You know, ha! I can put them back to free. Yeah, nothing It's changed. a trap! <laughs> yeah, Two turns were wasted by Slipha, basically. You activated my trap card. Well, it's not to totally wasted. Like, he really wanted to play the, those Wild Girls. It's just he just didn't get them. I think he needs some lessons from Ties. I mean, he does end up wrathing the Voidwalker on the left after uh, getting, getting five them up. 
What's interesting though, is I have to wonder though how relevant sometimes these plays can be just to incentivize a certain turn four as opposed to another. I don't know that that's anything he was thinking about, but sometimes, you know, if the Void Walker is damaged to two, does the opponent want to play Defender instead of, say, another four drop, like Void Caller? Um, you know, it, it, it might affect the way your opponent plays. You'll, you'll probably play it's, the it's Void Caller still if you get the Demon. Right, if you get Void, I mean, Demon, like, let's say you get a Doom Guard, you probably would go for yeah. Void Caller. Like, even if you get in Gang Boss, whatever, just still sure. play the Void Caller. Sure. But here, a pretty good situation. Dark Wolf Alpha, you can deal with the two free and you want to deny the mana crystal. Go for face with the rest. That's actually a very threatening board for to sniff up. Without the swipe. Uh well oh, well that's one way to maybe making a comeback because Dr. you need Boom. the Doctor Boom. More than maybe, I think the Doctor Boom uh, being on five gives you a really good force of nature, gives you an Emperor Thorson, it gives you everything afterwards. So if he's gonna come back. I think this is the turn to do it. Most like what you have to plan here right now is that if you play the Dr. Boom and your opponent goes all in, so deals damage to your face with yeah. everything, then you probably have a good setup for Force of Nature because you will use the first tree end to set up the um, Void Walker on 1 HP so the bomb can finish that off and then have another trade. If it doesn't kill the Defender of Arcus, then your other bomb has a good trade. Good trade, yeah. And uh, if, he go, if he doesn't go all in and makes trades, you're a pretty happy guy. You just have to dodge power overwhelming here. That's the one thing you don't want to see is PO yeah. on that 3-1 for the trade. Because that I, would be a complete disaster. I totally agree with that play. And it's, it's really good to see it as well from Slypha. Because he is with his back to the wall. This is his last game. If he, well, if he loses. If he loses, he loses the match. So a lot of players tend to be super defensive and would slam maybe Druid of a Claw to protect themselves, which doesn't make them Well, sense. to be all fair here, I don't think that was another viable play than the Innervate of the Boom. It just brings too much value, and there's no reason to keep the Innervate for 10-6 when you can't even put two cards together there, so... Well, we'll see if the Boom Bots can do a lot of work. We've seen it in recent memory, there's been a few, uh, few decisive Boom Bots. Seems to be the case. Uh, I don't like the Void Color. I would rather see the Tap and the... Um, and Knife Juggler, even though you can have a turn 6 Knife Juggler into Implosion, I would still I could see that. that. I could see that. Yeah, I kind of I like that play. I think his, his idea is I don't want to lose my Juggler uh, to anything, and I really want to get the Implosion Knives, especially having gone... Oh, wow, wow. there's a direct spot <laughs> from Slitha. There but are no demons in that hand. And surprise, now he's surprise. totally relieved that this actually happened. Yeah. It would have been awful. If there would be a Malganis in the de in the hand, what yeah. about that Void Walker just being buffed up? What do you do? Any there? demon actually, right? It would be good. Anything, honestly, yeah. at this stage. Oh Everything. wow, he didn't even use the bomb. That's interesting. He wants to keep more minions for Savage War potential. But the, uh, the bomb will be traded with the Hunted Creeper. Actually, the bomb will I kill the juggler. <laughs> yeah, this bomb is killing the juggler. I think it's due for a kill and a juggle here. Ah, uh, he's just got it too as well. Well, Juggler well, survived. That's not gonna kill it. It's, it's not. It's not completely alive yet. Yeah, the, the, the bomb still has a chance to kill the Juggler. If it has. The, a... If Counter Creeper actually attacks into it, you have to attack into it. Like if you committed to this plan, you have to attack into right. it. Right. It's unfortunate you got a low roll and implosion if you're Riri here, and we saw him earlier with oh. the point card, and he's going all in. All right. And now he look at that. He needs to kill that Doctor Boom. And if you didn't attack into it, there's a chance that nothing will remain on board, and you will have to roll a four on the implosion to kill the Dr. Boom next turn. That's not something you want to rely on. Well, it's possible, especially because you rolled two. <coughs> but I agree, I would probably attack. That's it. not how, how statistic works, man. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. Oh, oh one more <laughs> hit. Oh, all right, he does it, but Force of Nature and Keeper are here to keep that in check if necessary. What do you have to say about this? Those oh. bombs were so trollish, right? They've been waiting. Oh, man. Second force of nature? For every life coach in the world. Makes sense. You just want to clear. Do you, do you even, the... like, kill the, the last minion? So, like, force, you clear three minions, and then with Dr. Bumi attacking the 1-1. One, one. Sliffa will probably just play the Dread of the Clone taunt mode and kill one of the imps, just because he saw one implosion already. I, I, I see what you mean here, because you, right. you actually see uh, one implosion, you don't expect the second one, mm -hmm. and then you're pretty much guaranteed to be safe against anything. 
no matter what. Yeah, exactly. So, abusive Sergeant here would really help Riri. Well, oh, still the, oh, oh, wow. Well, he has both, but I think you still go for the implosion. Yeah, even you if... You didn't see a swipe. You're oh. sure there's no swipe because it would be already played. Abusive Lothav is so tempting, though, because you set up a lot of damage on board and then tap Doomguard is but one turn away. I but agree. why not tap, see, the, see first what's happening, and then just play implosion for free damage. I think I like Lothav more. And play Abusive Surge. You, because you can't play Lothav if you tap. Yeah, but you don't, that's not your plan. If it's you not, tap... You don't want to win next turn? Oh, come on. Well, you do win next turn. I, I like I like Abusive and Lothar because not only you clear... <laughs> Lothar's like, no, no, no. We want Imps right here, boys. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the M. It's so good. Like, you get 5-5 five, five and 2-1 on board. Ah, I don't like it. You, <laughs> you're I, you're I the like cringe like, stall like Christmas. It. You don't like winning? You don't like weddings? <laughs> I heard you don't like weddings. I'm like, no, I'm sure he loves them. Yeah, Lothar right now wants to see uh, a play that's a bit more on the aggressive side. Because this this allows uh, Slipha to make a comeback with the Keeper of the Grove next turn, especially if the implosion will be low value. Yeah, I mean, either way, you have to dodge swipe in a spot like this, right? If you're Riri. Now, if you're Riri Tavs, he's putting himself in combo range, but he can't afford not to do it. Whoops, Dr. Boom is uh, kind of late to the party. It might uh, still be useful. What if he tapped combo. last turn? Yeah. He would have actually played it this turn. He's still in, in a fine spot if he, there's no swipe, right? Yeah. And there is no swipe, there's only the keeper. He's but he doesn't have a setup for lethal anyway this way. And he wasn't safe from comboing, from your opponent comboing your, uh, because of the load of already being dead, right? This turn. So, uh, I don't know. It's really tough to figure out what the perfect play was, was in this case. I feel like the abusive Lothab was the more aggressive route. If there's no taunt, you, you basically could win immediately. Uh, Ancient of Lore is a bit of an issue. Another abusive. Well, I guess you need to tap. If you, you tap, then you have a lethal with Doomguard. Well, you know there's no combo because you're still alive. Yeah. Well, you could get lethal now with PO even. I think you'd be close enough to... Because you get nine exactly. Power of Whelming or Doomguard are both lethal yep. off the top. Dark Definite Peddler is tap. also a lethal with Power of Whelming just being in it with Soulfire. If you tap... Definitely There's tap. about like six outs in your deck. A very and a Discovery. Good but you're dead right. to Force of Nature. But you've seen double Force of Nature, so yep. there's no way... Okay. So there's only Savadro, and Savadro will add six damage. And, and you're not really dead to Force, right? Well, you can trade. Force is out. Like you can make the trade. Use double Force yeah. already. To trade, yeah. You yeah. can't die to it. Well, that's an awful draw. But I'm sure you, I'm sure you, you meant. trade for, for the Keeper of the Grove and just go face, play Dr. Boom. You can't, you, you can't have the mana. You play oh. abuse it. Oh, yeah, right. That's why I think he would. Pr she should probably just play Boom and go face with everything and hope he's not dead. Well, Slyther does have Ancients of Lore if he wants to heal up. So he might go for the Wild Growth draw. But if he does that, he can't play, uh, you know, two minions this turn. He's going to have to commit maybe low tap hero power. If he were depending on whether or not he wants to heal. I think it's low to shred on next one as hero power. And no draw. Then you can set up your opponent at 10, and you trade for the abuser certain with your shade of next ramus. Yep. So you have a lot of outs within your deck. Two swipes, one keeper. <laughs> no, no, can I? And uh what else? This is not this is not a very good card. In his hand. Why do people play that thing? The Ruben Egg? Yeah, what, why do people play a 0-2 for 2 mana? Seems to be good. It's so I mean, it's from Nexramas, and everyone knows that every single card from Nexramas was playable. I, I mean, I, I would play Stonesian Gargoyle over the egg. Don't don't count your eggs before they hatch. When they, when they hatch, they're actually pretty good. Wow, he still Ooh. doesn't have lethal, but he's got There's two an claws. option. He two has... Of the claw? He played only one, right? Yeah, there's seven drawers. Keeper well. of the Grove finishes. Seven drawer. What else? Rough face? Uh, no. That's not useful. Well, you can you can still draw. You can draw into something. The worst case scenario, you go Wrath and the Shade onto Doctor Boom. Can you still you can still survive, right? Yeah, yeah. No matter what. Yeah. It could go super wrong, and everything is a blank. <laughs> it's possible. One card away. They're wow. Not wow. wow. Oh, man. And now there's no lethal possibility. So he needs to go into Dr. Boom. He needs to double trade into Boom. 
But then what what is the follow up? As a Drake or Emperor? Probably Emperor to fit the mana. To fit the mana, probably. Is it? And it's because it, if you draw swipe next turn you can yeah. You can still play Astro Drake next turn. But you you will waste um, possible double swipe turn. So there's three damage right now, he's looking for six more. The what? Boombots alone could account for a portion of that. This is another bad draw for Riri. You can see his <laughs> face right now is hidden under those yeah, th I mean, those fingers are basically saying, what is this, and why do I play this game? <laughs> why, am I, why am I not winning anymore? What is this druid? He's BMing. Oh, oh my, my god, god, it keeps getting worse. But that's a juggle. That's a juggle. Something. You silence your own spider. And you, you probably have to consider the story Sun as a threat as well. <laughs> it looks to me like a threat, yeah. I think lethal doesn't exist anymore. Oh, man. Silence egg. That's the first knife. Ah, 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 ah. All right, well done. Well done, Boombot. Nice. Now you killed, like, there's a chance. Oh, oh. my god. <laughs> Look at that. The second card will be a swipe. I'm sure of that. But he, he, he literally can't do anything, right? Uh, well, he has I to. I swear, if the second card is a swipe, I, I will feel so bad. Because, oh, so you mean like play Azuchik instead of Taurus? I think he might just swipe yes. for one on everything and hope the Aspirant tanks the damage. Because that means the eggs don't pop, right? Yeah. yeah. And it does, and it lives, which is the exact best Savage outcome. Or... Now, top, back to back, Riri top decks. Nope. That's a good card to have. Alganis is pretty decent. But, uh, yeah, you have to play it. There's no, My there's God, no reason not to play it. It's and Big Game contested. Hunter gets top decked by Slith. No, that's not it. <laughs> that is still, still lethal, though. Yeah, still lethal, absolutely. <laughs> but it's another swipe, by the way. Are you amused? <laughs> I, I am, I am, I am. But it's still lethal. He swipes the uh, the poor thing. Yeah, the Morganis then... attacks with 2-1, uh, and then Savager goes to face. Yeah. He's triple checking, making sure that the comeback is not a myth. And it looks like we're going to get into the last game oh, once man. again. That Druid is almost like a reverse sweep. It's possible. That's exactly what happened last last match. Druid took, uh, you know, the entire lineup of his opponent by basically yeah, keep going right, with the right. combos. To be honest, Ruri had a really unfortunate draw. Yeah, oh, about so. five draws back to back that were dead. Yeah. Uh, about that much. So it was... A pretty bad zoo draw. Now the big question is, can he recover mentally? Because he was really stressed, like you could he see. He seemed, him. yeah. The Law of Horsen says that if you didn't draw your, like, you know, staple cards in the, all of the, uh, in the whole game, then you will draw it in your opening hand, right? So. We'll see. I think he's, if he mulligans that stuff away, then he's going to be for sure stuck with, uh, you know, the seven drops and the combo. <laughs> Well, so now the big question is who gets the, the ramp cards, and there is an Innervate. Litha gets the Aspirant and the Innervate. Lucky for Riri, he's got the Wrath to deal with the Aspirant if it gets coined out. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Innervate Shade here. Can you just not do it and wait for... Well, I mean, Dr. Innervate Boom changes ball. things, though. Yeah, yeah, so like... Dr. Boom really, really changes things. Just... I would actually pass my turn two yeah. and go turn two Aspirant, turn three Shade, turn four Boom. I'll think about it as well. Innervating Shade has some merits because it will grow and at some point you will be able to, to kill Druid of the Claw. Mm -hmm. But then your curve is a bit worse. Yeah, Riri currently has a weird hand, but it, it stands to get a lot better the moment he picks up a uh, like an Innervate. Really but this, this Shredder here with the coin on three... Whatever happens, he will be able to play the Shredder. Yeah. Don't need the ramp. Lose the Aspirant, no issue. And you can actually attack with the Shade here, because you know your opponent really wants to kill the 2-3. Yeah, if you kill the 2-3, then you keep the Shade. Yeah. So you get an extra 4 damage out, I mean an extra 3 damage now, and an extra 4 next turn, so... I think there was a lot of merit to unstealthing it immediately. Yeah. But I, like, I can understand the keeping it as well, for the future. Alright. The first draw that doesn't curve for Slitha. What are you telling me? There's a pallet shredder here. No, no, but the Druid of the Claw is not curving on four. No, 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 no. He, that would be an innervate. No. Second, actually second shredder. Keeping that shade, that shade stealthed all the way through. Well, keep the growth this silence. Point, I don't mind here. What's at up? At this point, I think you need to keep the Shadow Next Ram as hidden until 
uh, it will be 6-6, six, six, so you have a 100% chance of killing a Drill Claw in taunt mode. Without BGH also ruining you, I guess? Yes, exactly. And it, especially when you have Dr. Boom in the hand, right? Yeah. You don't care about that big enhancer because you, you know that you will have a, uh, a Dr. Boom. So if you have a good trade and your opponent is pushed to use um, the big game hunter turn after that, after you made the trade, that's a good deal. So that was an interesting slide because Keeper of the Grove could have silenced the Shredder and set it out like the one health after the trade. And that would have allowed you to get it out uh, of the board with swipe. But because it's, it's spawning a two drop, you're likely to be able to use that Keeper to clean up the Shredder. So there's like two ways to play the, the turn four here. Yeah. And back to Riri, it's rid of a claw possibility. Yeah, with a shade up at four. Is there any merit to charge into the shade? Well, no, I just want to silence that shade. Yeah. That's it. Like, get a 2 2 and a 3 2. That's probably best. Please do offer me a trade. I'll take it. Yeah, right. Yep. Then probably Slifa will an answer with a Droid of a Clone charge mode. Just to clean up the Keeper. And use the elephants to guide him. Goodness. Oh. Well, that's a good draw. Yeah. I would have... Actually, I think I would just drop the Sylvanas here and deal five damage to the face. And it just curve into boom afterwards and yeah. keep the pressure up until Savage Roar yeah. gives you a lethal. Yeah, that just sounds very tempting. But look at the amount of pressure he's putting on anyway, right? Yeah, I think actually keeping the 4-6 is, is, is all right as well. You've seen a swipe, so... You've seen swipe, you've seen one keeper, and there was no Dread on the Koala on five. It's, it's, I think Slitha is reverse sweeping at this point. Yeah, yes. It's looking really likely that he pulls it off. Dr. Boom into Savage Roar looks pretty sweet. And he is the one having the tempo advantage. Yeah, he it's plays really Dr. Boom back. and there's no, no draw from Riri. He has to find it off the top. So what's the best play here? The best play is... That is no good play. Everything feels bad and that's a problem. And you have to make the best out of a bad situation. So it's and I think that's the, the root of the call. The root of the call is the taunt, right? Yeah. It's really unfortunate because it feels very weak. Well, it is weak. And it just dies to the shade and root of the claw. And then he can go face for free damage and play Dr. Boom. It's perfect. And then he has even lost it. Yeah, he can lock out any attempt at recovery from his opponent next turn. Now, the question is, what does Riri play here? No, I, I can't really see a way for him without getting a BGH off the top. Like, he has the option of healing himself with the Ancient of Lore, but that's not really a way to win, yeah. unfortunately. But is there even a way to win? Well, if he goes Keeper Shade, what happens? Like, Keeper killed at 4-2, then with the second Keeper, you kill the 3-2 to limit the, the number of minions on board, and you play Shade to have something to fight back. Like, if you go for the... So you, you die and you never win, basically. Yeah, yeah. So now you're hoping he just doesn't have the, uh, the lethal. And there is lethal with the Savage Yeah, more than enough. And so that gets the reverse sweep from 0-2 to 3-2. Oh, well, congrats to Sleeper. Huh? That was really well played. Yeah, he was uh, with his back to the wall and he was able to come back to the Druid, even though really had those bad draws with Zoo. But Sleeper played really well. Like he. He used all the situations that he was given, and he didn't have great draw himself. Like, he was so close to lethal. Right, he was always a little shy of getting, like, a perfect response to anything his opponent played. Like, initially, you know, the double attacks into the Voidwalkers, uh, they looked a bit, uh, like, a bit clunky, but they ended up kind of forcing the, uh, the defender of Argus out, and that really didn't put a massive, you know, high-tempo four draw for his opponent, and he ended up being able to, after that point, stabilize and counter the, the yep. Warlock. So, I'm a little surprised at the way this actually planned out, but hey, you know. Yeah, like we said in the beginning, really winning with Paladin was so huge. And right. We, we, we fought, like he has a big advantage coming into the, the next matchups. But then, yeah. Druid. But that was, um, that was a long match, actually. That was a long match. I mean, this is the guy that we casted for the international qualifier. Yeah. Online. So he ended up going through his first match. He's got other matches in the round, uh, in the group stage, it's not quite over. So he's not guaranteed to move on, but... This is why we're kind of not as excited as usual, right? Because it's still the group stage. We're, we're on the, Those the are group stage, of course, yeah. Where yeah. if people start getting knocked out, then that's another story. But for the time being, it's mostly just uh, moving it's on. It's just about getting the consistent winners going through and maybe some upsets going on. 
but uh, they are not the elimination matches yet, so, you know, it will get more nervous during the later parts of the day. Yeah, but for now, Spain is actually dominating. AK Wonder and Slytha went through. And Slytha went through. Well, I went through. I don't know if they were going they through. Won their they won their first match, at least the ones that we saw on stream. Uh, I don't know if they've played any other ones off stream. I haven't caught I haven't it. I know we have some matches going on off stream that we're not broadcasting because there's too many matches in the group stage. We've only got so much time. So well, let's... Uh, it's round robin, right? Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of matches. So um, we'll probably just go to, through the players like um, during the break so we can update you guys on the results after that. Yeah, we'll be uh, asking them what the score is to report on everything. We'll be taking a short break. We'll be back afterwards to keep on going with the Insomnia Trisover Championships. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, don't go anywhere.